campus thus far. And to the angel of this house, Bishop Marcus, giving honor to him, Pastor Freeman, my wife of 30, 32 years, I hope I got that right, 32 years, 33 this year. God has blessed us to be together, blessed us with a good life and two wonderful sons. I'm also thankful for my family that have come out to support. I appreciate you, my way back family. I appreciate you also for coming out to worship or to support. We're going to get right into it. If you know me or have heard me speak before, you know I'm not alone with the speaker, so you'll get a little early tonight. Um, and I'm quite sure nobody's going to be sad about that, so we're going to move on. <laughs> um, 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 6, verse. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give light, give, give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the ex excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Skipping down to the 17th verse. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the, not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And one more scripture just for good measure. Romans 8th chapter, 31st verse. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Just for a few moments, I'm going to preach to you from the subject using the 8th and 9th verse. I win. Amen. And for subtopic... God gets the glory. Amen. Vincent Bohannon has a popular song, um, and I just recently heard it as I was looking for something, and it said, we will fight and we will win. We speak victory to every trial we'll end. We are overcomers by the blood of the lamb, no longer defeated, we're winners now. Then it goes on to say, we always win, we always win. No matter what may come my way, we always win. Amen. No matter what the circumstances, we always win. How many of you know it's only by the grace of God that we always win? Amen. And I'm gonna ask you to do this once, I won't ask you to do it again, just one time. If you can turn to your neighbor and say, we win. Oh, we could do it a little better than that. Let's give a little more feeling to that. Turn to your neighbor one, one more time. <laughs> Say, we win. we win. Amen. We win, I win, is what we would consider a declarative statement. It's either individually or you see it in corporate senses. We all together as a team or as a group win. But more importantly, we as individuals win. The confidence of that statement is not based on anything in the future, but is usually based on what's been accomplished in the past. I've won in the past. God's delivered me in the past. God's brought me through this. God's delivered me through that. Therefore, I have confidence that he will do it again in the future. That confidence is not based on my old ability. Not based on what I think I could do or how much I know, but that confidence in what God has already done. It's confidence in what God has already put in me, what God has already shown me, what God has already allowed me to do, what God has already allowed me to be. My confidence is not necessarily just in me, but more importantly, it's in God. Yes. This confidence that I have in God, that he will deliver, that he will bring me out, there's a reason for it. Not just that he's brought me out, 
But everything he's allowing me to go through is for his glory. Amen. It is important that I recognize that it's for his glory. Otherwise, I'd be bitter at the trial. Otherwise, I'd be upset because I'm going through something. Because remember, we're humans. And I'll speak for me. I won't speak for you. I don't like to go through anything. I don't want it. I don't have to have it. But if I know, because I know it's for God's glory, I can handle it a little bit better. I can go through. I can keep my head up. Knowing that in order for him to get the glory, he has to bring me out. There's a, I won't say quid pro quo, but in essence, it is. If I go through, if I continue, God will deliver. If I'm bitter, if I'm mad, if I'm upset while I'm going through, that trial may just last just a little bit longer. Because remember, God is trying to work something out of you, trying to work something in you, trying to do something in you in order for you to go through. So if I go through, I can make the declarative statement, I win. I will win. Because God's in control. It's not about me. It's about God. He's in control of the situation and he will bring me through. There's not a doubt about that. I have a God who knows all, sees all, is everywhere. I serve him. He loves me. He loves me enough even to chastise me. Even enough to let me go through a thing. Even enough to work out my own little idiosyncrasies. I dare say my own sins. He knows how to work it out. And how to bring me out on the other side. Get this. Athletes, when they're preparing for a competition, they are working out. They're eating right. They're doing what is necessary to get to win. They aren't working through the process of saying, okay, I may lose this, so I'm going to work out a little harder. I may lose. I'm just going to go anyway. There's a confidence. I'm doing this because I'm going to win. We don't go through this life in Christ downsizing or making passive kind of like, mm, I'm just going through the motions. There is no going through the motions. You're going with the expect expectation. The expectation that I'm going to win. I'm coming out on top. I'm not going through to live in church and be in church to go to hell. I'm living to go to heaven. I'm living for Christ so that he will bless me. I'm living for Christ so he will keep on keeping me. I'm studying. I'm praying. I'm doing all. I'm preparing. I'm making myself ready so that when he's ready for to do something in my life, I'm the better for it. Because we don't want to do anything sideways or half step. Whatever we're doing for Christ, we want to do it to our fullest ability. We want to do it to all that we have. I don't necessarily consider myself a preacher, but I will preach until whatever God has me to the best of my ability. God's in control of our lives. We plan, and planning is not a bad thing. Planning is a good thing. But we plan, but we have to be conscious of what God has for us. All of our preparation is because God is leading us down the path. Right? It's not our own movements. It's God leading us. So when I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm praying, I'm praising, I'm worshiping, I'm worshiping at the expectation of doing it as to to the will of God. I'm not doing it so I get the glory. Because you can't, you aren't smart enough. You aren't big enough. You aren't verbose enough. There's nothing about you that make it for your glory. If you get in trouble, you can't bring yourself out. You may think you want to. Many times we do try to. We do. And we mess it up even worse. But if we just wait, because we're impatient. Like my wife, we on the road, she wanted to get the help from the guy on the side of the road. We had already discussed it. I told her, nobody's going to help you on the side of the road. They're trying to get home too, so they're not going to give you a jump and risk their batteries. 
But now she's going to ask him anyway. But we just prayed. She, while she was praying, I went to the car, put my hand on the ignition, and I prayed too. So then we just had to wait. Had to wait till God does what he's going to do. He doesn't always move instantly. Sometimes he lets you wait it out a little bit just to see where you're going to go. Just to see what you're going to do. So you, actually, he already knows what you're going to do so you can see where you're at. So you can see, are you trusting him to bring you out? Or are you going to step out on your own and mess it up? What are you going to do? It's your choice. Remember, I've always said God's not pushing anything on us. He's offering it to us. We have to accept it. He's not going to push. He's like, I already got the plan for you. I already know where you should go. I know how you should go. You have to wait and let me do it. Don't do it on your own. You will mess it up. You can't win on your own. You're only going to win through Christ. Part of winning or part of a winner's mindset, part of winning is having the right mindset. You have to believe. It's not my own ability because sometimes that mindset starts with, and usually in the world, as you, if you look at secular, when they talk about a winner's mindset, they talk about a self-belief, belief in yourself, belief in what you can do, a mindset and your own abilities. Not bad, but not complete. Belief in God's ability to do what he needs to do in your life it's that ultimate winner's mindset. Because you're putting your trust first in God. What he's already been able to bless you with. What he's already put in you to do. That he will bring forth what he's already put in your life. That's the ultimate mindset. Part of that mindset is resilience. Being able to bounce back from setbacks and from failures. We all fail at some time. We haven't perfect, we haven't made it. But we felt about the ability to bounce back. When I was younger, I was first saved, something had happened and I felt like I was just done. Lord did love me, whatever. My brother came up to me, he was newly saved too, and he said, why are you wallowing in it? Get up and serve God. We can't let setbacks or down sets get in our way. We have to get up. We have to push forward. We have to make it. Because if we want to win, you're not getting it sitting on the bench. You're getting it because you're acting. Another part is a growth mindset. Meaning, I'm not all that yet. I'm not perfect yet, so that means there's some work for me to do. When you think you've got it all, that means you're sitting down and you're, okay, I'm good. I don't need to win no more. I'm, I'm fired. I've done it up. But that's not the mindset of a winner. The mindset of a winner say, oh, I've got that. Now, where else do I got to go? I've been there, done that. What's next? I'm ready to go forward. I'm ready to do more because of my love for Christ. Keep on going mental toughness. This is difficult, especially church folk, because we don't like to talk about mental issues. We like to, ooh, whatever. We like to do that. But we have to have a mental fortitude that when things come our way, when what we consider church hurt come our way, we can shake it off. Like, no, it's not about me. It's about Christ. It's not about what I feel. It's about Christ. It's not about what they do to me. It's about what I do. We have to be able to hold fast to what God has done in our lives. It's not about us. We have to believe that God can bring us even through that church hurt. Even through those disappointments, even through those downsets, God can bring us out. The next item is action. Many times we say, God told me this. God told me that. God got this for me. But we don't do nothing. We don't do nothing. I'm going to wait to see what God do. God waiting to see what you do. I've told you, what action are you going to take to prepare for it? What action are you doing to prepare for? Are you studying? Are you praying? Are you showing love? Are you being the saint that I asked you to be? 
Are you doing the basics that I require, but yet you're looking for more? And you won't do what I already told you to do. Jesus. You have to step up. Because we can't ride the bench and expect the ring. You're going to ride the bench. And I want the diamond ring to go with it. No, they don't come for those. MVPs don't get to ride the bench. They get it because they're in it. They're in the fight. They're running. They're fighting. That's where you get the crown. The next is the vision. Whatever God has told you, hold on to it. Don't let it go. Because all these setbacks, all these disappointments, they will try to take your eyes off of what God has for you. And you'll start looking around at the people instead of focusing on God. If God told you something, he didn't tell everybody else. He told you. So why are you looking at somebody else to confirm what God told you? He didn't tell them. And they're not going to get on your coattail to ride with you. They more than likely going to tell you you're crazy. And that you need to go back and pray again. Because it wasn't their vision. It's what God gave you. Trust what God gave you. Then it's raising the bar. As I said earlier, it's going the next step. I've done this. I've got this. I've accomplished this. Lord, what's next? Not that you're asking for more trouble. You're just asking to go a little higher in the Lord. We all want to get a little higher. Because we don't want to be saying, good to heaven. And he's like, okay. The guy the, um, where he gave the talents out. He gave the talents out to two, two others. They did what they needed to do to make those talents grow. The third one hit it in the ground. What was his results? He didn't get nothing. When he came back to his master, what, what was his answer? You wicked, unprofitable servant. You would have get, just put it in the bank and earn some interest. Do something with it. But you sat and waited. You did nothing with what I gave you. Because you thought I needed you to be higher. You thought I need No. He could do something with the lease. Part of the scripture was in clay jars. You know clay jars? They are fragile. They are not the best looking. They're just made for real fast. Just to hold something. We're those clay jars. God's not looking for fancy. He's looking for someone that will do the work. Are you going to do the work? Are you going to make the declaration that I win? Are you going to persevere? We have to persevere. We have to stay fast. Have to hold on. Because if we're not holding on, we won't win. When those athletes are running, they're running races. I watched the Olympics. Good for them. I would never be able to do that. But... They pressed. They struck. I saw the runners running. The expressions on their face was like, I can't do no more, but I'm going to give it a little four. I can't go no more. I'm running this race. I'm going to win. And a few of them were way out in front. They didn't slow down. They kept running because their job was to beat their own records. I'm not worried about beating somebody else's record that's already less than me. I've already done that. I have to do better than I did before to come up a little higher. I can't just be back on my laurels and say I've already accomplished. God is looking for more. There's no limit to what God can do in your life. There's no limit to what he has for you. We're the limit. We put the brakes on God because of our lack of confidence in who he is. We have to be confident in our God. He saved you. He brought you out. He's delivered you multiple times. You've heard the testimonies how he delivered others. Why can't you believe? Or we say we believe, but we don't quite believe it. I know often because I've done it myself and I've been there. I prayed for something, saw it come to pass, and then was surprised that it happened. What in the world was I praying for if I didn't believe it was going to happen? We have to actually believe that God will do exactly what he said if we're going to pray for something I've taken down later in my later years of my life praying with an expect expectancy I don't know why I can't get that word right but praying with an expect ex 
I'm going to stop. Pray with expectation that God is going to do exactly what I prayed for. Because now that I'm more in the mindset, I have to be in his will. Because sometimes we pray for our will. Lord, I want to be a multimillionaire. Lord, I want, the, I want a Rolls Royce. I want this. I want that. God said you couldn't take care of the Honda. How are you going to take care of the Rolls Royce? I have what you need. I have what I have for you. Get on my page. Get on, get on, get on my page. If you're on my page, then we, when you pray, it's something I already have for you. When you seek my face, it's something I already have for you. I will bless you, but I'm not going to bless you beyond what you can handle. Because how there's a um, study of people that won the lottery. And most of the study, most of them, the majority of them, I would say, end up poorer than they were before they won the lottery. Because they never learned to handle what they had. So when they got more, it overwhelmed them. We have to learn to handle what we got. And let God work through us in what we have. Let him build us up. And when we get to the place where we can have the war, he blesses us with war. We are then, as the young lady said earlier, good stewards of what he gave us. Sometimes it's not no, it's not now. You can't handle it right now. That's right. That's right. But if you let me work out my purpose in you, it will be a yes. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Then you can declare, because it's not, since we're declaring this by faith, it's not that I see the end, but I'm believing for the end. I'm believing that God's going to bring me out. So therefore, I could declaratively state, I win. I'm a winner. I will win. I'm coming out of this thing. I will be successful. This is not only spiritual. This is natural too. I will be because of God. Because of what he's already promised. Because of what he's already done. Because of what I've already seen him do. I can declare I win. God's in control. Saints, remember that. It's not about you. It's about God. What does God have for me? How does God want me to move? How does God want to deliver me? And if I can get on that same page with God, oh, it'll be so much sweeter. Because some of what we suffer is because we're resisting what God's plan is. But if I can get on God's page, I can sing. Though it don't look like I want it to right now, but I can sing, I can do a little shout, I can give him, yes, I'm in pain, but yes, I praise him. No, I don't have all I want, but I praise him. No, I don't have it all, but I praise him. Yes, there's some things I don't like, but I'm praising him. In spite of the situation, I can give him glory. I can give him praise because I know I'm not doubting this. I know he'll bring me out. I know for a fact. How? Because he's already done it before. And my God ain't a loser. Excuse the poor English. But my God ain't no loser. He always wins. Always. There's a song goes, he's never failed me. And then the song, it goes, yet. Long time ago, Mother Temple said, it's now, not yet. It's just he's never failed me. He's never failed me, and he never will. So my belief, my trust is in God. I think I've said enough, but saints, trust God. Trust him. And declare you win.